Hey, sweetie. Um, I think I'm out of gas, and I was, <laughs> I was hoping you could come help me. <laughs> yeah, I'll be right there. <laughs> Where are you? I'm on the side of the road. It says it. <laughs> it says it has half a tank, but it definitely doesn't have half a tank. It doesn't even start anymore. So, um. Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Richard, and today I wanted to share with you my 1952 Studebaker 2R5 pickup. And this truck is so freaking cool and so unique comparative to anything I've ever owned in the past. And it's 100% mine. And I just thought I had to share it with you and share with you like this unique piece of automotive history that I can now cherish and, and own for the next generation. So this truck in specific is extremely important to me, and it's such a special truck. And I really wanted to share that with you. So I figured we'd go on a drive and I could uh, tell you everything about that. And then we could do a walk around in the end and I can tell you about everything that's so unique about this truck comparative to anything modern in the world today. So that's first, that's second, this is third. And that's about, I don't know, maybe 30 miles per hour. <laughs> and it's like incredibly hot in here. There's like this vent, this vent underneath this, the dashboard that's like blowing hot air. And then when I, there's a heater, a heater knob on the dash. But when I turn it, the car gets even hotter. I don't know. It's just a trip. But I don't, it's just so unique and so special. And uh, what makes this truck so special to me is that it's a 1952 and it's been in my family since 1952. So my grandmother on my mother's side uh, bought this truck brand new and used it as a farm truck. Uh, she used to haul, haul walnuts and, and almonds in it and you know whatever was growing on the trees at the time and uh, they just used it and it, it's so special. Um, I have some pictures of my mom in 1958 and she was born in 1952 as well and she's like six years old and it's uh my mom and and my aunt and uh their dog you know sitting in the bed of this truck you know posing for a picture or sitting on the sitting on the front of the truck uh you know and the, that iconic grill that iconic studebaker white and blue grill that this this truck has um sitting right on the front posing for a picture and uh and that's pretty cool, you know, that the history that, that went into this truck. Um, you know, a, a little bit of a personal story is my mother passed away from, from uh, cancer when I was 10 years old. And, uh, you know, at, at the time, you know, you don't really go and go in a second. Let's see here. Maybe first. Ugh. Ah, definitely in a second. All right. So... My mom, she passed away from cancer when I was 10 years old, and um, you know, I didn't really know her that well, honestly. I, I didn't know her as well as anyone else in my family knew her, and uh, that, that's kind of rough. You know, you kind of, you know, as an adult, you kind of cling on to images of, you know, who she was or who she might have been or whatever, whatever somebody tells you about her or something like that. You kind of cling on to things like that. So, you know, before my mother passed away, uh, my grandmother, she, she married and remarried uh, to another guy. And um, she was about 75 at the time or something like that. And the guy was nice enough, but I, I noticed a distinct change in, in the way that my grandmother would be around my side of the family. And, you know, she wasn't around that much anymore. And uh, part of that was, for some reason, this truck got sold out from underneath us. And that was really tragic for my mom, um, you know, going through all this cancer therapy and then, you know, having this iconic truck that, that she loves so much, you know, gone now. So that was really hard for her. And I remember um, somehow, some way, my dad was able to buy the truck back from the guy uh, about a year before she passed away from cancer. And um, that's that's pretty cool and I remember one of my fondest memories of my mom was you know before she passed away was uh, 
her not knowing anything about the truck, her not knowing that it was back in the family again, and uh, her finding out by, by opening these two big barn doors at the family farm, and the, the truck being there, and I, I don't think I've ever seen her so happy in her life, and that was, you know, for me, I was like nine years old at the time, and, and you know, I, I honestly never really saw her happy. I, I always saw her in pain, and I always saw her extremely sad, and um, I think she knew that she was dying, and I think it was this was kind of like a little bit of a glimmer of light in, in such a dreary world that was like her life at the time. And, you know, I just remember the, the expression that she had on her face, the look that she had on her face, and, and everything like that. And so that, that is really a special memory that I have of my mom. It's, it's something that, that's super unique, and it's something that, even as an adult, I, you know, I really hold on to it, and I really, I really cherish it as well. And it's kind of surprising the, the things that we cherish, right? Like, the stuff that we leave behind that reminds people of, of you is just, it's just funny. Like, I have, I have a couple of her pictures, and I have, of all things, I have her crepe maker, because she would make crepes uh, and blintzes on, on Easter. And so, so every, every year, my, my wife and I, we make blintzes for Easter, and it's just such a special tradition and it helps me remember her. But that doesn't really answer how I I, I got to own this thing. Um, so if you watched one of my previous videos, I tagged it above in the uh, in a card above. I, I kind of had a falling out with my dad. And um, after my mother passed away, it was my dad's truck. We, we rarely ever drove it. It was just in storage. And um, after the army, I had such a hard falling out period with my father. And um, it eventually led to him disowning me. And I was completely heartbroken because this is like the only thing that I really wanted that he owned. And that was really hard because it's, it's one of the only things that really I hold on to that reminds me of my mom. And that's a really good memory for me. So I thought when he disowned me, I thought I would never see this truck again. I really did. I thought it was going to be gone forever. And it, it made me really, really sad. <laughs> I mean, you can imagine, right? It's this truck that that is just so special to you. And, you know, as an automotive, you know, enthusiast, it's just, it's such a unique vehicle. And, and, uh, so I, I get, I get this call one day from my aunt that my dad's trying to sell the truck or get rid of it. I mean, he told my aunt that he would give the truck to anyone, but uh, that he would sell it to me and I didn't argue with him I, I didn't care so I you know the next day I wrote the check and I, I didn't care because it it was such a special thing to me and it, the price you pay for nostalgia is just astronomical <laughs> but it's so special to me and it's so unique and, and I cherish that and I cherish that one memory and I'm willing to pay for that one memory and what's so more What's even more special about all of this is when I went to go pick up this truck, it was at my aunt's house and, and lo and behold, it was the same barn that my mother saw it in right before she passed away from cancer. And it had the same doors with the same lettering on the doors and it was parked in the exact same spot. And that's just so special to me. It's just like kind of reliving that memory and reliving that emotion that I felt about her and, and, and all of that just kind of came, came back to me and seeing the old seeing the old farm you know honestly it hasn't changed in 15 years it's like a little time capsule and and that's really special and I feel like this truck is is my way to remember my mom and my way to remember <laughs> what these trucks used to be like and what driving used to be like and and that to me is is so unique and it's something that I I really want to hold on to and um, I'm just really grateful for it I'm really grateful that you know I don't know God or the universe or whatever it may be has given me the opportunity to to hold on to this truck again and to really appreciate it and and to cherish it because because I thought I would never see it again and and for that, I'm, I'm just incredibly grateful. So, um, 
that that's just why it's so special to me and I thought I wanted to share that with you and you know and, and tell you that so this thing is so freaking cool this is the original color not the original paint I think it was painted about 30 years ago has a little bit of patina of course I love this iconic like Studebaker white lettering on the back I think it's so freaking cool I think it like really completes the car this isn't the original bumper um, I think it's a uh, I think it was like the tow package or whatever um, probably just leave it no big deal and, you know, I was thinking it would be cool here is I could put uh, white walls on it. The kind of the same tire aspect ratio, I think that would be really, really freaking sweet. And then you got the bed. What's funny is back here is I, I actually ran out of gas when I was trying to, uh, trying to film this. And uh, <laughs> my wife had to come, come get me some gas. So that, that was uh, quite the trip. You know, what, what was I thinking? The gas gauge wasn't working. And... Uh, <laughs> It said half a tank, and then I, I start going up a hill, and it just completely dies. But honestly, the gas is like six years old. I don't even know what I was thinking. I think it probably hasn't got gas in it in at least six years, at least. Let's go around the front, and then we can take a look at the inside. And then you got that iconic white with the blue. I just think it looks so freaking cool. And the same with the bumper. It just looks so awesome these i hate these uh, for one they're a little bit dented in and um, they're the turn signals and I, they're definitely not a factory option um, i guess they are period correct but eh. um, i just always thought that they kind of looked like a little bit bulbousy on the outside i was thinking i was thinking it might look a little bit better if i had them on the on like the the bumper itself but um yeah you know they work i guess so there's that at least Take a look at the inside. I love the I love the contrast with this um, like kind of tan, and then you have like the blue. I think it looks so freaking cool. Original seats, the camera bag over there. That might be a little bit dirty. It's been sitting in a barn. I haven't <laughs> I haven't cleaned it yet. I love that dash. <laughs> There's the fuel gauge that doesn't work. It goes to half a tank, but um, it doesn't move. And then you got the, the uh, amp meter and then the speedometer. Doesn't work. You need to fix it. Uh, the oil gauge, oil pressure gauge, that doesn't work. You need to uh, modify it, I think. <laughs> and then uh, the uh, coolant temperature gauge, and that actually works. And then over here we have, I think this is the lights for the, uh, the dash. And then this is overdrive. Doesn't work. Um, and then I need, to, this is the choke that works. And then the headlights work. And then this is how you turn it on with the key. And then you have this heater knob, but I have this under here. It's like extremely hot. There's like this little, little port. I don't know if you can see it and it just blasts feet, heat onto my feet like all day. And then when I turn that heater knob, it gets even hotter. So what I might do for the summer is just cover it up with a little bit of duct tape. And what's really unique about under here is you have the, the handbrake, right? And then what are those two buttons? What are those? This, this is for this one back here is how you actually turn it over. So what you do is you get your foot, right, there you go. And then that pushes down the button and then turns over the motor. And then, <laughs> and then the car starts. And then this down here is for your high beams. So you have like your high beam on and then your high beam off. And then your brakes, which are not vacuum assisted. So they're like standing, like you have to stand on them to get them to stop. And then your gas, which is basically an on off switch, which is fun. Uh, this period radio, I don't know if it's original or not, but it sure does look cool. I think I need to restore that a little bit. Um, ashtray. And then the glove box. It's like the biggest glove box in the world. I have an oil filter in there even. Yeah, it's just super cool. Super cool. Super unique truck. Let's look underneath the hood. Under here, we have the Champion, Champion 170 cubic inch motor, uh, pushing out about 80 horsepower. 
So this thing really gets up and goes, as you can tell. You saw how I was bang shifting it into uh, from first into third. You know, it's just just the sheer raw power this thing has is just really amazing. You know, uh, <laughs> flathead V V sorry flathead inline six. Um, so it's just a really unique piece of automotive history. It really is. The thing runs great, drives great. Um, radiator in the front, all the wiring. Six volt charging system. So not a 12 volt like traditional, or like, I guess not traditional, like more modern cars. Um, you know, spark plug wires, basic stuff. It's just super basic. Oil filter. Yeah, really unique, really special. And then um, the color of the block is almost the color of the car. Looks pretty cool. Looks pretty good. I think this car is just absolutely amazing and I'm, I'm just blown away by the opportunity to own it and, and to just kind of cherish that um, experience that I've had with it so far and you know just kind of uh, keep it going for the next generation to enjoy as well and I think they I think they look pretty good together I don't know what do you think I think it's uh, a pretty good uh, brother and sister combination just a little bit and I think if my mom saw this I think she would uh, like that quite a lot and I think it would bring a lot of joy to her eyes and um, I think it's just really special to see both of the uh, the Gallardo Superleggera and this this wonderful piece of automotive history right next to it. And I'm going to do a couple videos on this. Um, there are some things I need to fix and I just think that the engineering behind this truck is just it's it's absolutely amazing because it's so simple but it's just it's so beautiful at the same time and I, I want to share a lot of that with you and I think you're going to learn a lot along the way. So if you like this video and you want more videos like this, uh, please leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of my truck and um, I'd like to hear your thoughts. And if you like this video, please consider give, giving this video a like. And until next time, thanks.